Gemini, this is Dana with Taurus Star Tarot, and we are about to do a reading for your sign today. That being said, it goes without being said that this is not a personal reading for you. This is a general reading for the star sign of Gemini, the sun sign of Gemini. If you have Gemini anywhere in your chart, this reading may or may not resonate with you. If it resonates with you, that's awesome. That means these cards are speaking directly to you today. If it doesn't resonate with you, this just isn't your story. It's not what's going on in your life. And if you leave comments in the comment section saying, this doesn't resonate with me, I'm just going to delete them so everybody on the board doesn't think you're a complete and total moron, okay? All right, so that being said, check out your rising sign, your sun sign, which today is Gemini, and your moon sign. Your rising sign, I'm sorry, your sun sign, Gemini, is how you receive information from the world. Your moon sign is how you feel about things. It's how you process that information. And your rising sign is how you spit that information back out. Okay, so cross-watch your other signs to get a more complete and thorough understanding of what's going on with um, free tarot card readings on YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. Stay tuned. <coughs> Sorry, Gems. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry. Stay tuned at the end of this reading for a public service announcement about ads on YouTube. Okay. All right. Well, let's get right into this. This is a big reading. It's uh, I had to do a lot of clarifying cards to get to the bottom of it, but I think I got it and let's go. So you come into this reading with the Prince of Pentacles. You're thinking about life, right? The job of the Prince of Pentacles, this is the Knight of Pentacles, right? The job of this character is to survey the kingdom. He walks the border, the perimeter of the property. He surveys the crops. He surveys the workers. He makes sure everybody has the tools and the resources that they need to do their job. He makes a list. He checks it twice. And he implements um, any anything that he needs to implement to, to, make, to make it all go, right? That's what you're doing. That's what you're opening this reading with. You are assessing your life. The Four of Cups comes in and says that you are contemplating and reevaluating your entire life right now. You're contemplating and reevaluating. What you're contemplating and reevaluating about your life is um, number one, your abundance. But the Empress is also about having, about being dependent on others, right? So I think that's really what you're reevaluating in your life is your dependence on other people or someone else, right? Specifically, your dependence on romance and you know this prince of cups he's the metaphorical knight in shining armor right so what you're reevaluating in your life is your codependency your dependence on other people in regards to romance and love a love relationship the ace of pentacles comes in and says that you're manifesting a new beginning in your life this could be manifesting a new financial opportunity but it's also manifesting prosperity, right? Manifesting a new opportunity in your life with the Nine of Cups right there. This Nine of Cups is about comfort and happiness and satisfaction, right? This is also a card about dissatisfaction. So you are evaluating your dependency on a romantic relationship in your life. You want to manifest a new opportunity because not only do you want to seek out happiness and satisfaction in your life, but with the Nine of Cups right there, it's telling me that you have some dissatisfaction in your life at the moment. Otherwise, why would you be reevaluating and contemplating everything, right? Three of Swords. There is associated with this reevaluation some kind of sorrow, heartbreak, grief, um, a painful separation, right? With the Two of Pentacles. This is, and these are the clarifying cards that I pulled, right? All of these with the Rider Weight deck are the clarifying cards that I pulled. So when I asked for clarification about this Three of Swords, what came up? is the two of pentacles this card is about balance and prioritization in your life right so this three of swords this heartbreak this sorrow this grief 
has something to do with balance and prioritization in your life, which I'm assuming will go back to this Prince of Cups right here, right? The Five of Swords comes in and says that there's conflict in the situation. Or perhaps you're feeling conflicted because you know in order to pursue happiness and satisfaction in your life, you're going to have to break somebody's heart. Judgment comes in. This is a card about making a decision, a very important decision in your life. This is about a rebirth. It's also about, about having some self-doubt, right? So I think you might be, I think it's both. I think you want a rebirth in your life, but you are also having some self-doubt about, about taking the steps that you need to take in order to have this rebirth in your life. The tower moment comes in and gives you a kick in the pants. It gives you a kick in the pants and it puts an absolute ending to your feelings of self-doubt. It puts an ending to your inability to make a decision about this whole thing right here. This tower moment, you know, oftentimes I can disseminate whether this tower moment is, is a chaos and confusion and an upheaval, right, or sudden change or if it's a revelation and an awakening or an epiphany. To tell you the truth, I asked for clarification and I got death and the Ace of Cups. So honestly, I can't tell you whether this tower moment, this kick in the pants, is going to be chaos and sudden change in your life, or if it's simply an epiphany, a revelation, or an awakening. Because this is a general reading, this is something that you're going to have to disseminate. This is the subject matter for a personal reading. So I'm sorry to leave you hanging, but I just, I don't know what this tower moment is for you. However, I do know that with the death card, there's an absolute ending to any kind of ambiguity that you might be experiencing in regards to following an inner calling, in regards to changing your life. The death of the ambiguity, the death of the indecision, the death to your inability to um, grab on and, and move forward forward with some kind of decision to to create this new beginning in your life to manifest this new beginning with your life leaves you um with a lot of emotion overwhelming emotion but i'm here to tell you that this overwhelming emotion that you're that you're going to feel or are feeling is is absolute sheer excitement with the princess of pentacles this is the pay i'm sorry the yeah the princess of pentacles this is a card about manifesting new opportunities in your life, right? So that being said, the Ace of Cups can't, the overwhelming emotion isn't a negative thing. It's a good thing because you come out of this death experience, this ending to your feelings of confusion with the princess of pentacles bound and determined to have a new beginning in your life what comes next for you my lovely gems is the six of cups now this card is about reuniting reconcil reconciliation it's also about memories familiarity Anything that, that gives you the warm fuzzies about your past, right? But what I think you're doing with this card right here is you are reconciling, but you're reconciling with yourself. You're reconciling your feelings, this three of swords twice in the conflict, right? You're reconciling your feelings within yourself about the pain that your decision to move forward is going to cause you or someone involved in your life. Because you are in the hangman energy, you're pausing, you're surrendering, you're contemplating, right? And you're going to come out on the other side with new perspectives about what it is you need to do and where it is you need to go. 
the Four of Pentacles comes in and says that you are a little self-protective right now. And if this Empress card over here is about your dependence on another person, this Four of Pentacles can very well indicate that you have a sense of insecurity about your financial situation. Either way, you are in, you are, you are in a lockdown, right? You're in lockdown. While you're in this hangman energy right here, you are in lockdown, contemplating your personal security, okay? The high priestess comes in and helps you work through this. This high priestess comes in and helps you work through your um, feelings of, of um, it helps you reconcile all of the feelings that you're having about this new beginning that you want in your life and the sorrow and the heartbreak that may very well have to accompany it. This high priestess, the sit down with your intuition and your subconscious mind with spirit, right? helps you work through the confusion that you have with the Seven of Cups. This card is about fantasy, illusion, wishful thinking, choices, and feeling confused. And I do believe that this is all of that, okay? This High Priestess is helping you work through all of it because based on all of these previous cards right here, I would venture to say that, that you are concerned that breaking free and going out on your own um, is illusion, wishful thinking, right? Because we have this card of insecurity right here with the four of pentacles, right? Wishful thinking and confusion, right? This card is about choices that you're making. And it's also about feeling confused, right? When the high priestess comes in and helps you, whoops, helps you deal with all of that. And in your intuition and your subconscious mind, you know you know in your heart of hearts, you know that moving forward and pursuing a brand new beginning with the Ace of Pentacles and the Princess of Pentacles, manifesting and pursuing a brand new beginning in your life is where you need to be. Five of Pentacles says you are leaving somebody out in the cold. You are. You're leaving somebody out in the cold because the Wheel of Fortune comes in and says a brand new life cycle is starting for you. A brand new life cycle. This is a card about good luck, karma, one life cycle ending, a new life cycle beginning, and a turning point in your destiny. We start out the middle of this reading with you doing a regretful but necessary transition. Regretful again, back to the three of swords and the five of swords right there, right? It's regretful. There's some sorrow and some heartache and some grief and some pain involved in this decision, involved in this transition. However, the sun card comes in and says, you see things clearly now and you know, you know what it is that's going to make you happy in your life. The Queen of Swords reiterates that and says that you have formulated a decision. You've absolutely formulated a decision and you are going to cut out of your life all of the things that are holding you back. The Queen of Cups comes in and reiterates this right here. The Queen of Cups is all about having emotional security, being calm, cool, collective, and intuitive, knowing that you know that you know that this is the right decision for your life. Four of Cups comes in again, right? Four of Cups is right there. Four of Cups comes in and says that you are contemplating and reevaluating. You're giving it one good last thing think before you jump off the cliff into your new journey, right? One good last think. Sorry, gems. Um, the six of wands comes in and says that you're going to begin to feel some progress, some victory, some self-confidence about this decision that you've made up here. The star card comes in and says that you see much, much better things for you in the future. You see hope and you have faith that there's purpose and renewal on the horizon for you. The king of wands comes in, says you feel successful, right? You feel successful. You have vision. The nine of pentacles, a sense of self-sufficiency. 
And the seven of pentacles, again, vision. You have vision for what it is you want to invest your life into. Eight of wands, swift change, right? Swift change, action, speed, movement in your life out of conflict, out of indecision, into the Queen of Pentacles. Let me scooch these up so you can see. Into the Queen of Pentacles, into a feeling of self-sufficiency. There is no queen in the tarot, except for the Empress. She's not a queen, she's the Empress. But there is no queen in the tarot who represents self-sufficiency more than the Queen of Pentacles. This, this is a card about bringing home the bacon and frying it up in the pan. This is a card about being in complete control of your own life, about having security. The three of pentacles comes in. This is a card about initial fulfillment, right? Initial fulfillment. Teamwork, collaboration, yes. Learning, yes, but also a card about initial fulfillment. So that goes right with this Queen of Pentacles right here, feeling very much in control of yourself, your situation, and your life. The Nine of Wands comes in and says courage, right? You have courage and strength. Courage and strength and inspiration. Courage, strength, and inspiration for your life. This Ace of Wands is an inspired, powerful, creative beginning in your life. Lovers, this card is all about choices right now. This card is about love, harmony, relationships, values alignment, and choices. In your reading right now, this card is about value alignment and choices in your life the King of Cups. Again, reiterating this over here, the King of Cups is all about emotional balance and control. The King of Swords, you have emotional balance and control about the decisions that you've made in your life. Choices, value alignments, emotional balance and control, decision. The Seven of Swords. Now, this is a card about betrayal, deception, getting away with something, shady behavior in general. But the flip side of this card is about breaking free of mental challenges, which is what you have done, Gemini. You have broken free from mental challenges. How do we know that? Because the Ace of Swords is what comes next. This is power and victory, mental power and victory, breakthroughs, absolute mental clarity, and your own personal truth. Followed by the Ten of Pentacles, planning for your future, having a solid foundation by which to build your life. The High Priestess comes in. The High Priestess comes in because this devil is right here, right? So we have the high priestess versus the devil right here. Now I'm going to leave this high priestess and I'm going to address this devil. And then I'm going to come back and address this high priestess, right? The devil. This is toxic energy. Okay. Now I want to, I want to back up real quick because this is the card of Capricorn. It probably doesn't mean anything to you in this reading. It may, but Capricorns get a bad rap because their card is associated with the devil, right? And every time everybody sees this, it's automatically, ah, toxic, toxic, right? The devil card is about human nature. This card is about attachments, restrictions, addictions, sexuality, and your shadow self. Your shadow self is disparaging thoughts in your head, right? This is a simply human nature. It's not evil. It's not necessarily toxic. It's human nature. What this card is representing here for you is that this, this, this human nature right here, is your shadow self. It's also, I think, an unhealthy attachment to whatever you had to leave back here that caused pain, okay? The shadow self, this unhealthy attachment, 
was a restriction for you. What is this restriction? The internal conflict with the five of wands. This is strife, tension, and conflict. This strife, tension, and conflict is the blockage for progress in your life with the chariot. The chariot is all about having control, willpower, determination to take the action necessary to achieve success. Okay. And that's what this devil card right here is representing. If we wanted to put it this way, we could say conflict is the blockage to your success. Okay. In regards to the four of wands, in regards to your personal transition, right? Your personal transition, we had, I thought we had the wheel right there. This, this conflict is the blockage to forward movement in your life. The four of wands being a, a transition. The wheel up here saying one life cycle is ending and a new life cycle is beginning right? But this devil energy related, I think, directly to this pain and this five of swords and ultimately to the very beginning of this reading, you reassessing your life and reevaluating everything, right? Four of wands, transition. Now I know everybody says celebration, harmony, marriage, home, uh, happy life kind of thing. But this card is also about a breakdown in communication and transition. For you in this reading, this card is about transition. This conflict, which is the restriction in your life, preventing you from having forward movement into success, about a transition, right? And hey, if you want to put the traditional meaning on there, fine, we can do that. It's blocking your transition into harmony in your life. The five of wands, the conflict, the two of pentacles, prioritization and balance in your life in order to achieve the ace of pentacles. This ace of pentacles is all about the manifestation of a prosperous new opportunity in your life. You can take this reading for love. You can take it for personal. You can take it for finance, for money, whatever it is. It, is, it, is, it starts with you contemplating and reevaluating your life. And it ends in the manifestation of a brand new prosperous opportunity in your life. Oh, the high priestess. <laughs> Let's go back and address that. This high priestess is you sitting down with your intuition, with your subconscious mind, with spirit, twice you've done this in this reading, and coming to terms with this devil energy right here, understanding once and for all that this was the blockage for you to turn over a new leaf, to start a new beginning in your life, to exit one life cycle and to begin a new life cycle. If you've watched any of my other readings, you know I go off on a tangent about the wheel because we just can't start a new life cycle whenever we want to. We can move to ten buck two, change our name and dye our hair. But until we've learned the lessons that we need to learn, we will never be released from the current life cycle that we're in. This wheel of fortune right here is you being released from this life cycle. This devil energy down here and this high priestess is you understanding the lessons that needed to be learned so you can move into a new life cycle. And there you go, Gemini. That is your reading. Now, if you want to stay tuned for a quick PSA about ads on YouTube, by all means, please do that. And if you don't, that's okay too. This is where we part ways. Congratulations on the, on the epiphany and the forward movement in your life. Okay. This is a PSA about ads on YouTube videos, okay? When you see ads on YouTube videos, it means that YouTube has monetized that channel. 
When I first started this channel, I had no idea that you could get paid for doing this. I, I, I had no idea. Then I got an email from YouTube that said that they would pay me to allow them to put ads on my videos. And I was like, well, hell yeah, right? So when a creator reaches a certain, um, a creator, that's what they call them on YouTube, the people who produce videos, creators, right? When a creator re reaches a certain amount of views and subscribers, YouTube allows you to monetize your channel. The creator of that video then gets paid on average between 10 cents and 25 cents for every ad that you see. So instead of getting irritated with the ads, reset your mind frame to understand that in exchange for getting free tarot card readings or information or entertainment or whatever it is that you're watching on YouTube, the creator of that video is getting paid approximately 10 to 25 cents by YouTube every time you see that ad. So know that your three seconds of time you know, the three seconds until you can skip the ad is the exchange for the free information or entertainment that you're getting on YouTube. If there's not ads on the videos that you watch, either the channel is not eligible for monetization or the video contains previously copyrighted material. Some creators don't monetize because they use the channel to create income in other ways, such as selling products or services. So I don't know about other creators, but it takes me about two hours to put up a single video from prep to publication. That's about 24 hours for all 12 zodiac signs for each, each segment that I put out, right? Monthly, mid-monthly, or anything else. So getting a small payout from YouTube is, is really nice to have. So definitely, you know, change your mindset. Instead of being just like totally irritated that ads are coming through, know that the person that created that video is getting some kind of compensation, monetary compensation for the time and the effort that they put into it. And if you love your YouTube readers on, on, on YouTube, you know, the tarot card readers, if you love them and, you know, you feel attached to them and there's a sense of community, don't be disgruntled that there's little ads in between. Be happy that your tarot card reader, me, anybody else, is getting, you know, a little bit of a kickback for the time and the effort that they put into doing the videos that help thousands and thousands of people, okay? All right. Love, light, and peace to you. Namaste.